Hello and welcome to our watercolour journey. Today I'm going to talk to you about something very special. Do you really need a stencil brush? Well, let's have a look. Today I'm going to talk to you about the brushes that we use. And uh, we're going to start off with the Art Secret number 14, which is a very big brush. Then we have the Wahong W2 and we have a Rubens number one and a Rubens zero and a no-name brand Chinese brush. So there we are. These are the ones that we use in general. Art Secret, Wahong, Rubens. Okay, so we're starting off with the Art Secret number 14. This is a rather big brush, a little bit cumbersome, I would say, but it does its job. It's fairly hard, hog hairs, and um, it holds a lot of water. So when you do use it, try to dab it out or dry it out with a towel before you start using it as a stencil. The next one is the Wahong. This is a gorgeous little brush. I use that one the most. Also hog hairs and very, very versatile. The Rubens number one and two are new brushes and um, we're still working them in. They're also hog hair, but I think they feel a little bit softer than the Wahong and the Art Secret. So the number one is a little bit bigger and of course the zero is the smallest one that we have. The Chinese brush used to be a long calligraphy type brush, but it kept losing its hair, so I cut it off. And now I'm using it for foliage and grasses and so on. I squish the hairs flat between my fingers and then I use that to make the grasses. So let me show you what you can do. I'm going to start off with a big one and show you what basic things you can do with it. This is really very basic. So first I'm just dabbing a few dots of yellow and then I dip the brush into the green, sap green there and I'm going to just kind of create some textures just to show you. You can swivel it, you can just press down and already there's some texture there that you don't get with a normal brush. What I want to do though is to show you how to create a tree. So use the brush, fill it with paint, dab it in the paint and then just start to dab it down on the paper. If it's too wet it's going to make solid circles or solid marks but if you let it dry a little bit, if you dry it out a wee bit and you use the sides you can really make some beautiful foliage for your trees which looks a whole lot more natural than when using a normal brush. So I've used sap green and um, shadow green here on the sides of the brush there and then just dab it down very very lightly. Okay, just to give my tree some life there and some kind of perspective, I just quickly drew in the trunk and a branch or two just to show you what it can look like. Quick and easy tree. I thought I want to do some grasses. So I'm using the Chinese brush, pressing the hairs down between my fingers, dipped it in the paint and you just pull it up. Keep the hairs pressed between your fingers 
The less paint you have on it, the clearer the grasses are going to be or separated. If it's got too much paint, it will be blobby. To create the illusion of sun shining through your tree, you can use the bouquet effect and very lightly make your circles in your tree in the foliage. Do not press too hard because you will damage the paper. So very lightly draw the little circles, dab out the excess water. Now I wanted to add some foliage, so the side of the stencil brush, you dip the side in the paint and just press lightly to add some shadow, some definition, some more texture to your trees. You can also do the same thing with the grasses, again use the side, just pull it up. To add some extra leaves and the outlying leaves, again the excess paint that's on your brush, just dab it in. You can do it in circular motion or just press. Right, so with a big brush we can make nice big circles. And when they dry, these circles usually make a very hard line. So to soften it, you can use the smaller brush and just soften the outline of your circle. Mine was a little bit wet, so in this video it's still showing a watermark there. But if you do it when your paint is dry, then it will work very nicely. The small brush is also very handy to make a perfect circle. And you can add some colors to it and there you go. Beautiful, perfect circle. You can also add some colors to your existing painting and blend with it. Now there's the hard line, but you will see a bit later on when it's drier, then it will blend beautifully. And that is also something that you can't really do with a normal brush. The bouquet brushes or stencil brushes are really, really handy to do all these other kinds of techniques and especially to soften the hard lines. So we can make trees and grasses, blend our colors and soften the hard lines. So far, that is what you can do with a stencil brush. Okay, so the painting has dried a little bit. So now I'm going to do the bouquet thing. So with a dry brush, it, it can be damp, but not wet. You can start making your circles. Dab out the excess water and again do not press too hard. You don't need to lift the fibers. So use your brush in a circular motion and lift the paint. Now here I want you to notice I did not clean my brush and I went back to the first circle and see what happened. So make sure before you go to a different color, clean your brush first. Last few dabs on the tree. Now that the rest of it is drier, if you keep on putting it on while it's still wet, it's going to just blend into each other.
Now let's see how this whole thing works on a real painting. Now I used a lot of pigment on this painting because I wanted to show you how the bouquet effect can really work and also to show you how the paint is lifted out. So normally you would not use this much pigment on a landscape or on any painting for that matter. It kind of looks acrylic by this time. But the point was to show you how to use your stencil brush. I dabbed out a few clouds with a tissue and then I dry, let my painting dry. Now you can see there are really hard lines on the clouds. So what to do about it? Easy, you stencil it out. So in this case, I just started with the first cloud and I started stenciling out or brushing out the hard lines on the little clouds that I made. I'm not going to take out all the hard lines. I want to demonstrate the bouquet effect and you will see how it works as we go. So gently move in circular motions, dab out the excess water. In this case, all around the clouds, just to lift out some of the paint. Now I used cobalt and phthalo blue, so it's a little bit staining and um, I couldn't get the really white clouds that I wanted. So here I am doing the bouquets, but now be careful. If you go from one color to another, make sure that you clean your brush because you will transfer the colors if you don't, and it can cause quite a mess. So rather clean the brush before you go to a next color. Then I added some trees just to complete the landscape and to showcase the bouquet effect a little bit more. And of course, I want to show you how you can make these trees in your landscape with your stencil brush. So basic branches, basic texture of the landscape, and then we are going to start to put in the leaves of the trees. I'm mixing up some sap green to start the trees with or the foliage with. You always start with your lightest color. So the sap green is my first color and just dab it in with a damp stencil brush. Not wet, just damp. You can use the flat side or the sides of the brush.
Work very lightly, you don't have to press hard. Then I'm using the shadow green, mixing up some shadow green there so that I can add the shadows. Shadow green or perylene green. You can also add some Payne's Grey to the sap green to make a darker shade. Again with the sides of the stencil brush, just dabbing lightly to make the foliage. You can also add some texture to the landscape itself. Grasses, pull out the grasses from the bottom of your page or from the baseline and use the side of the stencil brush. Pull up very lightly and you will get nice loose grasses. Different shades again, sap green, perylene green, you can even use some brown, um, burnt sienna, any of those. Little lines underneath the grasses just to anchor them. So now I demonstrated to you what you can do. You can make bouquets, you can make branches and trees, and you can make grasses with a stencil brush. So it is actually quite a useful tool to have and especially if you have different sizes of them. The smallest one can make really small circles but you can also make bigger circles. When I looked at the painting I wasn't really satisfied. I wanted to have more light so I used the Wahong W2 to just create a little bit more light in my trees. especially on this side where I had the dark green and um, it lifted off the paint really beautifully. It did not damage the paper because I pressed very, very lightly. I would rather take longer to make the circles, but press lightly. Your circles can touch or overlap. You can make them any way you want to and you can make them different sizes. So use your stencil brush with confidence. And there's our final result from the large brush and the small brush. Thank you so much for joining our watercolor journey. See you soon.